Good morning and welcome. Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Today as we stand at the beginning of a new holy week, we are reminded of the cries of the children and the songs of angels. Let's begin our worship. Please stand. Please open up your hymnals to page 45. We will be following Morning Praise, page 45.
Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday is recorded in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning with the ninth verse. And Zechariah, with the eyes of prophecy, looks ahead in time to this day, this celebration of Palm Sunday, the original Palm Sunday when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of the colt of a donkey. Zechariah writes, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim, and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Our psalm song of the day is hymn number 130, and this actually is a rendition of Psalm 118. second lesson for this morning recorded in Philippians chapter 2 beginning with the fifth verse points to the humbleness of our Savior Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends our second lesson. Out of respect for the Lord's Gospel, please rise. 
The Holy Gospel is recorded in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of His disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you doing this, tell him, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Here ends our Gospel reading. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our next hymn, hymn number 133. Grace, pardon, and everlasting life are yours. From God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is taken from a parallel gospel account from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. If you'd like to follow along, uh, use the Bible in the pew in which you're seated. I'll give you a moment uh, to find that reference. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19.
John chapter 12, beginning with the 12th verse. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. This is God's word. We bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, in our mind's eye, we are watching Jesus riding in majesty into Jerusalem on the back of a colt, the foal of a donkey. We hear the cries, we sing the hosannas together with those who sang them so many years ago. Heavenly Father, as we think about your word today, bless your word in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Dear friends, have you gotten the urge to do any spring cleaning yet? With the nice weather that we've been having, I think many of us probably already have the itch to do the spring cleaning. What what kind of criteria do you use when you're spring cleaning? Is it use it or lose it? And if you haven't used it in a few years, it's gone. Could it be, when in doubt, throw it out? Or perhaps you're thinking of putting it away for a rainy day. I think there's a a lot of criteria that we can use when we do spring cleaning. And probably there's some motivation behind it. It might be that we've got relatives or friends that are coming up to visit us. And because we know they're going to be in town and they may be staying with us, we may want to get rid of some things. Or maybe we're planning on having a garage sale and it's important that we go through this stuff not only to make sure that we can reduce what we have, but also so that we know what we can sell. Or maybe it's just a matter of trying to reduce the clutter in our lives. Spring cleaning is a good thing. And it makes us feel good when we're able to reduce what we have and things are not as cluttered. Well, today as we look into God's Word for today, I'd like for us to do a little bit of spring cleaning. Because finally, with the start of Holy Week, we are reminded that Jesus not only rode into Jerusalem, but there was a time in our lives when He rode into our hearts. The season of Lent has been a season for us of reflection. A time for us to take a closer look at our hearts. And I believe today that it's important for us to do perhaps some spring cleaning on our hearts as once again we prepare to celebrate Holy Week and the resurrection of Jesus next Sunday. The events of the last few days of the week before the week that we call holy, Jesus was very busy. And we can see that he never wavered in his decision to go to Jerusalem. On that Thursday before Holy Week, Jesus visited Jericho. He was coming towards Jerusalem. He stopped in Jericho. And it was there that he met the young man, or the man, Zacchaeus. The short man who crawled up into a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus. And Jesus stopped at the base of that tree and he said, as he looked up at Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house today for lunch or supper. On Friday, the day after that, Jesus 
continued to travel on the road to Jerusalem, no doubt with hundreds, maybe even thousands of pilgrims, people who were coming from all over the Roman Empire, to go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And as Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem, He, he stopped at, at Bethany. He decided He was going to spend the night and spend the Sabbath at Bethany at the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. That night, Jesus was invited to a dinner at Simon's. And we know that it was there that, that Mary poured out some very important and very expensive perfume onto Jesus' feet and on His hair. It wasn't until that Sunday morning, though, that Jesus got ready for the Palm Sunday celebration, the welcome that He was going to receive, not only from the pilgrims that were coming along the road with Him, but when word came out that Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem, only a short two-mile walk, many of the people in Jerusalem began to come out. Now, it may very well have been, too, that There were people along the way who had heard about Lazarus who stopped at Bethany just to see Lazarus because Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. He had been in the tomb four days. And there were no doubt, there no doubt was a very big buzz in Jerusalem. A buzz of people who were talking about this particular miracle who may very well have walked out of Jerusalem and gone that two miles just to meet the man who had been in the grave for four days and lived to tell about it. When Jesus begins His journey on that Palm Sunday into Jerusalem, that's where we meet His disciples. And Jesus telling His disciples that they needed to go and find a a colt, the foal of a donkey. And little did they realize until much later that Jesus commanded them to do that because that was an Old Testament prophecy of Zechariah that we heard this morning that predicted that this would be the way that the king of David, the descendant of David, the Messiah of the world, would be coming into Jerusalem. That Old Testament prophecy of a donkey was not the only thing that Jesus was thinking about. Because this was the day during the Passover when actually the Passover lamb was chosen. According to the words in the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament law, during the days of Passover or preceding Passover, each family was to choose a lamb without blemish, if they could afford a lamb, and it was chosen on this day. What better way for Jesus to reveal Himself as the Passover Lamb, the one sacrifice for all that would would pay the price for the sins of all people of all time. Because here was a Lamb without spot or blemish. He was perfect. There wasn't any stain or any sin on Him. We know the account well. We see the palms this morning and we're reminded of what happened on that day. People had their shouts of Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the King of David, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. But then they also cut down palm branches. Not a difficult thing to do in a land where palms thrive. And they threw the palm branches on the road as a sign of their homage to Jesus. But then many of them took off their outer cloak. Now that was a real sacrifice. Because that may have been the only other change of clothes that they had. And for them to throw that in the road so that his donkey could ride over it showed a tremendous amount of homage uh, to Jesus. But many in the crowd missed the meaning on that day. Missed why Jesus was really there. I suppose it would be like like watching the Iditarod race and, 
and traveling all the way to Nome so that you could be there when the, the finishing musher, the first musher to cross the finish line, crossed so that you could witness it. But then having that happen in the middle of the night and somehow you slept right through it. That's what happened to many of the people who were there on that day who were singing Hosanna. The word Hosanna means bring salvation, save now, son of David. But for many in their minds, they were thinking political king. If we think about the political climate in Israel at that time, it was sad. The Roman government had the Israelites under their thumb and under their feet. They were paying a tremendous price in taxes, and it was not going to the Israelite, uh, the, the people of Israel. It was actually being funneled right to Rome. And so, when people heard about the Messiah, when they heard about Jesus, and when they saw the miracles that Jesus had performed over the three years that he was during, it was during his ministry, many had no doubt. This man had what it, take, uh, what it takes. Not only could he provide all the food that they would ever need, but he could also heal the sick. There would be no need for any kind of a health plan if Jesus was the one who was in power. And finally, many saw just how powerful he was as they heard of him stilling the sea. As they heard of him raising people from the dead as they heard of the many things that Jesus was able to do, they had no doubt if He was the one that was elected to be over them, they would return to the golden age of Israel when Saul and David and Solomon were the kings and Israel not only thrived but was a world power. And So, so many of the people who were lining the road on that day we're saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Bring that salvation now, Jesus, because we need it. That's what they were saying. But by the end of that week, the week that we call holy, those cries of Hosanna turned to cries of crucify Him, crucify Him. I'm sure that many who were standing along the road on that Sunday they were hoping and praying and wishing that Jesus would be the next ruler, that He would be the one. But when they saw what happened and how He was captured and how He was hauled from court to court and finally they heard the words, the words of Pontius Pilate who allowed himself to wash his hands Jesus' fate and hand him over to those who would crucify him, they lost their heart. They felt they had been misled. And so they began to cry out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. You know, today, Jesus still rides into our hearts. He comes to us to show us that his ride on that first Palm Sunday was to bring salvation, life, and joy to all God's people. You know, he wants to bring us blessedness and also He wants to heal us forever. But what does He hear in the shouting in our lives, in our, in our hearts and in our actions? Are we prepared to meet Him on the road to Jerusalem? Do we shout Hosanna on Palm Sunday? And then, like the disciples, when trouble comes, when we're really pressed, do we run away like the disciples did in the Garden of Gethsemane? Or are we like, like the Apostle Peter, who, when he was with the Lord, he sang his praises, and he said he would never, ever leave Jesus. And yet, when he was pushed, he denied his Lord three times. Do we in our prayers and praises on Sunday 
hold up our Savior as not only our brother, but also our Savior and our King. But then during the week, do we refuse to do His will in our families, in our businesses, or with our relationships? Do we vow allegiance and then deny Him? Do we dispute who is the greatest among us and yet find it very hard to be servant of all? Do we in our selfishness want to have everything our way? If we do, then we sin. Then we need to see Jesus ride on in majesty and lowly pomp ride on to die because, because what happens at the end of this week in history is so important for our eternal lives. Because Jesus rides on in victory, rides on in majesty for every one of us. He lays down His life. But He knew that that was the only way, the only way to take away the sin that was heavy on our hearts and that still affects us every day of our lives. It was Jesus' love and resolve to make us sinless and to make us eternally members of God's family. And the only way that He could do it was to stay the course and to walk the walk to Calvary to lay down His life. Let's be thankful today that Jesus did keep things in perspective. He knew what the week would bring. He knew how difficult it would be. He struggled with that as a human being, a true human being, But he also resolved to walk through it and do the will of God, the Father. Whatever the Father wanted, Jesus was ready to do. Jesus never once strayed off his intended purpose to suffer and die on the cross because he knew that the cross was the only way to free us from our sin and to give us what we needed. Prepare to meet the king. Not everybody was happy that day. In fact, we we find out that there were a number of people in the crowd, many of them religious leaders, who were very, very upset with what Jesus did. In fact, one of the gospel writers tells us that they were so upset, they told Jesus, tell them to stop. Tell them to stop saying, Hosanna. And Jesus responded by saying, If I told them to stop, the stones would cry out the words, Hosanna. I think that's probably the only time when Jesus allowed this kind of honor to be given to him while he was walking the roads of this earth. This was the only time that he allowed people to praise and honor him. Jesus knew that this would be a very important point, a turning point, not only in his life, but also in the lives of those who would follow generation after generation down to our generation too. You know, the religious leaders of that day were so upset because Jesus was stealing their thunder. And the people looked at Jesus, they saw someone, someone who wasn't holding on to those old traditions. Someone who was very transparent in who he was and what he wanted. And they were upset because Jesus, they felt Jesus was upstaging them. One of the gospel writers tells us that when Jesus looked forward in time, he could tell, he could see what was going to happen that week. He knew that the hatred that these people had would continue to grow and grow and grow until finally they would take his life. But on that day, the cries and the shouts of the people as they were praising and honoring him was a wonderful, wonderful thing. You know, those thoughts of what happened on that first Palm Sunday live on in our lives and in our hearts today. You know, especially as we sing those hymns, we are reminded of the honor and the praise and the glory that we too can give our Lord. 
However, there are people today who try to make Jesus into someone that he is not. There are some today who think that that Jesus was really championing world peace. And yet if we read the Bible, we know that God tells us that there won't be world peace. But that there will continue to be nations rising against nations, wars upon wars and rumors of wars. And this will happen until Jesus comes again. There are religious leaders today who would also point to Jesus as someone who was championing the cause of saving the environment. Some will even say that that Jesus is the one, that He's the one who who ultimately is, is going to provide everything that we need here on this earth. But again and again and again, they do not want to talk about sin. They do not want to talk about the remedy for sin. They do not want to talk about what we see as the results of sin in the world around us. But more than anything, they don't necessarily want to talk about the cross and how that sin was paid for. And how we can know that that sin was taken off of our backs and off of our hearts and out of our hearts completely by what Jesus had done. And so when we sing Hosanna to the Son of David, we're really saying, Jesus, bring salvation and save us now. Jesus comes for our hearts and our lives, comes into our hearts and our lives to chase the shades of night away, of sin away. And we are reminded today of the fact that He rode into Jerusalem on that back of a donkey because He knew that His blood would buy us as His children. He comes, us, he comes to fill us with joy for living this life. He comes to assure us of His eternal love. He comes not as a destroying, marauding king, but rather as a loving conqueror interested in our lives and in the future that we will have together with Him in heaven. What does He find in our hearts? I think if we ask that question as His children, we recognize that He finds in our hearts the purity that only He has. Because He has given that to us when the covenant was made at our baptism when our sins were washed away. He wants us to know that in our hearts there is full and free forgiveness. He comes to prepare us to meet Him. And I would ask that that you would use this week as a time. A time to prepare your hearts. A time to recount exactly what took place so many years ago that has touched our lives and can touch the lives of all people everywhere. Now, Maybe you noticed when you walked in today the, the uh, DVDs that are out on the table in the entryway. Um, I encourage everybody to take a copy. They are free. Take a copy for your friends. You will also notice that uh, there are actually a mailing that actually went out this past week Uh, to 5,000 of our neighbors. But you can use this when you hand a copy of the DVD to your friends. You can say, join us on Easter morning for worship. Join us and come and worship the resurrected Lord Jesus. But watch this DVD before you come. Because the DVD does recount the week that changed everything. We know the accounts of that week. But how do they really apply to us? As you watch that DVD, think about, just think about the change in your life that God has enacted because of what happened so many years ago. The joy that you feel as one of God's children. The comfort and assurance that you have because you know my sins are forgiven. And God does not remember them because Jesus washed them away. 
Think about the impact it has had on your life and how it can change the lives of those who don't know or don't understand why Jesus really came. And so we do say Hosanna today. We're excited about being with the children on that day and singing those hymns of Hosanna to the Son of David. We're excited because we know it has touched our lives. It has made life in this world more bearable because we're looking ahead in time to being with Him forever. So take the time this week. Think about not only what God has done, but what He continues to do for us every day. And we will sing in our mind and probably throughout the week, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please open up your hymnals to page 48. Page 48. And we sing, We Praise You, O God, which is the Te Deum. Please be seated. We continue our worship as we bring our offerings to him.
Please rise for prayer. We sing the Lord have mercy on page 50. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal Savior, we are gathered we are gathered gathered on this palm sunday you have reminded us that jesus is the king of heaven and earth and we join the first palm sunday worshipers in praising and glorifying you for coming to this earth to be our savior though you are one with god the father and lord of all you humbled yourself and became one with us thanks be to you for living a life of perfect conformity to God's holy law in our place. Praise be to you for being obedient to death, even death on a cross, to redeem us from sin. Cause our voices to blend with those who sang your praises as you rode into Jerusalem. Move us to confess you before others as our Lord. Help us proclaim the message of peace and forgiveness to people of all nations. Use us to assure all people that your blood has cleansed them from sin and set them free from slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Move us to dedicate all we are and have to your glory. Lord Jesus, you are the King over all the earth. Bless the nations of this world with wise rulers and good government. Let peace prevail. Grant success to the businesses and industries of our land to serve for the common good. Calls Cause all employers to be honest and fair-minded and all employees to be diligent and faithful. Look with favor on our nation's schools. Be with those who teach and those who learn. Comfort the sick and the afflicted with the assurance of your care and protection. Strengthen the faith of the dying. Dear Savior, as we walk with you this week toward Calvary, keep us focused on your purpose for coming into this world and on call, our calling to spread this wonderful message of salvation. Hear us for your mercy's sake. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your almighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, Direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn, hymn number 369.
visitors. We're happy to have you worshiping with us. We invite you to share a cup of coffee and some refreshments immediately following the service downstairs. Um, also, if you haven't signed our guest book, uh, please do so before you leave. A uh, couple of announcements, actually quite a number of announcements, looking at uh, the church calendar this week. Uh, Tuesday morning, Horizon House Devotion and Singing. That begins at 11 a.m. If you'd like to join us, uh, we would love to have you join us there. Um, normally at it takes about a half hour, 45 minutes, and you can join your voice with ours and with the residents and have an opportunity to talk to them and bring a little bit of sunshine into their lives. Monday, Thursday evening worship, communion worship begins at 7 p.m. Good Friday worship begins at 7 p.m. Saturday morning there will be a, a breakfast and cleanup uh, set up for uh, Easter brunch. That actually begins about 8 a.m. for the breakfast and uh, by the time we have a little fellowship and enjoy a, a brief breakfast, uh, we'll dive into cleaning the church top to bottom and also setting up for the brunch uh, on Sunday. Speaking of the brunch, there is a sign-up sheet. If you would like to um, bring food for the meal next Sunday, um, there's a whole bunch of categories there. There's also a sign-up, I think it's on the last sheet, for volunteers to help with the cleanup. Um, so if you'd like to put your name on that, uh, we would welcome that also. Um, Easter worship, 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. And the Easter brunch begins at 11.30 a.m. Um, and also the announcement once again about um, taking things to invite your friends. I have more of those DVDs in my office. I didn't want to put too many out on the table. So um, please take whatever you would like and uh, make sure that you invite someone to join you and join us uh, for worship on Easter Sunday. Rachel, thank you for the beautiful music today. Uh, any other announcements? Yes, Faith. We're going to be taking pictures on Easter Sunday. Family pictures on Easter Sunday to rejuvenate our board out there. So Faith will be doing that. Um, very good, thank you. So come ready to have your picture snapped. Um, or bring a picture that you would like to put on the board. God's blessings to you this week.